Hi, Nisha. Hi. How are you doing today? Good, Sharon. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you for making the time yet again to come and teach us more. Today, we're going to have a discussion on how to manage a diverse and remote marketing team. And I believe you're the best person to give us, you know, your insights because you've been in this industry for decades. And um, on the first question of our conversation today, I wanted to know, in your experience, what are the key factors to consider when assembling a remote marketing team? So, uh, you know, it's very funny. Uh, we've not done a remote team for a long time in our, in our journey of, uh, you know, building Telugu. So we are, what, 23 years old and we just started being completely remote, mm -hmm. uh, maybe thanks to pandemic. So what happened was uh, during pandemic, it was very difficult for us to find people. It was, and we were like, okay, anyways, we're not meeting at office. So it doesn't matter if the person is, you know, from Hyderabad or from Bangalore or from any part of any world, right? A any part of the world. Yeah. So then that's when I started, you know, really looking at expanding. And, and trust me, the trial was with marketing team. So our first real, like, you know, hybrid or, um, you know, an online only team or a remote team, complete remote team started with marketing. Mm -hmm. And the first person to hire was uh, Akum, Akum, actually. It's very, yeah, which is very strange also because Akum also happens to be a friend's friend. And I got to know about it later during our conversation. But uh, oh, wow. yeah, there's so much, there's so much talent out there and there's so much opportunity uh, to, you know, meet and uh, connect and talk similar languages or different languages that I understand, right? Yeah. It was fun building the team. And um, I think the most important factor was to be able to have um, a very transparent culture, a very uh, open platform for each one of us to uh, share our thoughts. And I think what worked for us was um, trust. I, I, I believe that any relationship be it, you know, within the office or remote or anything starts from the fundamental concept of trust. Yeah. So if you're not able to trust somebody and if you, I am, you know, always looking at, okay, that's a remote person. So how are they doing screen grabs, this, that it's not going to work. So I think building a successful remote team is trust. So once I start trusting, it will be reciprocated. And I know it's very human that you cannot, you know, you cannot break somebody's trust. You cannot live with that. Yeah. So I think trusting somebody is most important for me. Oh, that's cool. And actually you've mentioned about culture. So that leads us to our second question. How do you define diversity within a remote marketing team? And do you believe it's important? So uh, initially I was recruiting everybody, uh, Sherlyn. So I, I started, you know, hiring people, talking to people and all. And then I realized that, um, you know, somewhere I became very focused on building a very women-centric team, which is fine. There's no harm in that. Yeah. But somewhere I felt like the, you know, balance uh, of having both was missing. So I started uh, handing over my, uh, you know, or delegating recruitment. Mm -hmm. to you know Akumu, Trinit and all of them mm -hmm. and there was this um, really nice uh, colleague of ours Pratik to him so that's when really diversity started uh, you know growing in the team as well and I feel that when people who you trust hire their own team members they will also start building with trust mm -hmm. and they will start building with something which they uh, see is missing within the team today because I don't work with everybody, right? I work with a few people, yeah. but you guys work with everybody else. So it's important to know, okay, what is missing in the team? What are those cogs which are not there and we need? So that's how I believe that uh, the diversity part kicked in the oh, team. Wow. It wasn't me. It was the team who did it actually. Oh, that's actually very, very, very smart because then someone, you can't see on everyone's point of view. You know, so Akumu sees in her Kenyan African point of view, someone else sees it from, you know, Middle East. Someone says, I love yeah. that. That's very, very good. Okay. 
Um, can you share some effective strategies you've implemented to promote inclusivity and ensure all team members feel valued and understood? Yeah, so uh, Shalan, inclusivity will eventually happen. Like, I don't think that's something that we should force um, or we should try and fit in because at the end of the day, we are all adults mm -hmm. working under the same uh, roof. And yeah. it's like how you have, uh, you know, when you have kids and when they, they're, you know, in, in India, at least we have large families, right? Yeah. Brother, brother, kids, then sisters, sisters, kids, all of us are growing up together, right? Yeah. So look at it, parents not, don't necessarily get involved into everything, but that's that holistic true. culture of growing together, uh, learning about each other, identifying what each one likes, doesn't like happens organically and that's exactly what i did over here where i left it for the team and if and i'm not saying that there won't be any differences there will be differences there are big fights also but they talk to each other and figure it out like how do you so most important thing that i tell people is you have a problem with somebody tell that person you tell me that's fine but i should not be the person who will go and tell the other person that hey you know what that person is feeling like this because then I will always be the middle point between the two of you. Yeah. And that's not what should have. It should be you telling that person that, hey, you know what? I didn't like it like this. You could have better done it this way. Or, you know, I would have preferred it in this way. So why don't we try it like this? Yeah. I think uh, that makes it very simple. And organically, the, the whole aspect of inclusivity will, will kick in. Okay. Actually, that you've mentioned that um, Vasu's interview with Amandeep, he said the exact same thing. He said, yeah. if you have an issue with your colleague, don't don't escalate it to the manager first. First, talk it yeah. through with them. Because then how awkward is it that your manager yeah. comes and tells you something that you didn't even yeah. know, but your colleague yeah. is the one with the issue. So, yeah, it, yeah. it adds a lot of friction. What the other person is going through, right? So yeah. In what context had that person said something and all? You you get you don't get into that. So when you talk to the person who you have a problem with or who you know you have a disagreement with, yeah, it's easier for you to convey and easier for that person to explain if they didn't mean it in a certain way. Yeah, you know? and that that yeah. must be a bit tricky, especially in a remote setting where most people were talking maybe through talk magnet, through emails. So how yeah. do how do people do they call each other or yeah so a lot of times uh, so you know th there was there was a situation when there were people who hadn't had a concern with a particular team member and uh, I didn't know about it mm -hmm. okay they did not come to me first but they had their own group and they were video calling each other and they were talking that oh. did you face something like this did you feel something like this and then they were like okay then they all came to me and then I said you. All of you have discussed it amongst yourselves. Why don't you bring in the person who you have a problem with and talk to that person also? Yeah. Like, you know, it's not easy. And yeah. that is exactly what they did. But, you know, I'm very surprised myself mm -hmm. that uh, even though we are remote, even though, uh, you know, uh, we're not meeting each other or we've never met each other, there have been such strong bonds that have been formed. Um, and a few colleagues are still in touch with the ex-colleagues they know more about their life so you form friendship anywhere you That's don't have true. to be there in front of each other like you know how you and akumo like yeah. you guys met at an interview panel and then you realize that you stay so close to each other yeah. you meet you work together so it's like that yeah but yeah i think when you start when the team starts hiring their own team they know their wavelength and i think they it'll it'll the friendship will start off Absolutely. And actually that we have talked about tools, I wanted to know what project management and communication tools are most effective for leading remote marketing teams and why? Honestly, I have really failed at this. <laughs> I don't think I have a very good answer, but um, we've tried a lot like from, uh, because we're, we're a self-funded company or we're a bootstrap company, right? So money is always important and you know when you try to see that okay where can you cut a bit do you want to really spend on so much and because we're we're a you know good number of team members always thinking that do we really go into buying an expensive tool which will 
you know, add to a bigger budget or do we use that budget to do something else, right? Mm -hmm. So we tried a lot of free tools. We tried a lot of uh, different uh, ways to, you know, uh, manage projects on, you know, Excel sheets, on groups and all of that. And I have I failed terribly, okay? And I think one thing that has worked is Sagar Mohandas, we call him SM, mm -hmm. plus CAM. So I think that has been working well for now for us. Yeah. I don't know if that is the best solution, but for us at this juncture, it's worked really well. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too, because even the fruit tools, you can't say they're subpar. You know, as technology yeah. en enhances and advances, we get yeah. better tools, even free, yeah. you know? Even when you think yeah. about AI right now, you don't actually True. have to pay for chat GPT because all these yeah. other free ones are going to give True. you similar results, even Absolutely. better sometimes. Yeah. I think it, you just need to know how to balance it, right? And yeah. I think yeah. that's where your leadership skills come in, you know? <laughs> because now you know, okay, money. If it was me, oh, spend all the money. <laughs> um, still on the tools. How do you ensure everyone on the team feels comfortable and proficient in using these tools? Like you've mentioned, Basecamp. Okay. <laughs> it's a long story. So, you know, when we when I said that we, we've not really succeeded or we failed miserably in this project management tool and all, so that also happened because a lot of people were not comfortable using a certain tool that we tried before and then, you know, things were not in place. But then I think when we introduced Basecamp, so, it was very important that majority of the team is comfortable using the um, tool that we, we've, you know, uh, given them. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's their tool. It's not for me. It's for them, right? Yeah. It's for the team. So I think asking everybody to use it for a certain period of time and then taking a vote from them saying that, okay, is everybody comfortable? And everybody said yes. And then we finally took, you know, uh, took the paid version of this tool and, Give it to everybody then. Ah, okay. So you usually also have like trainings, right? Yes. On how to use so, the tool? Yes. SM actually does a lot of training work that is because whenever somebody joins or whenever somebody's having an issue, SM does a training module for them that how to use Basecamp. And it's actually pretty straightforward. It's not very difficult to understand and it's very interactive. So that is uh, the tool is not very tech heavy, but yeah. it's more communicative so it, it makes life easier actually yeah i think this is the point where you can even self-promote you know talk <laughs> magnet and be like for communication we use this <laughs> true yeah okay um hmm Ooh. so our next question how do you ensure everyone on the team feels comfortable Shelly? Eh, sharing ideas and taking creative risks in a remote setting. So, um, again, it's an, it's a flat structure. There is no hierarchy as such. There is no, and I'm no expert. I tell that on day one to everybody I meet that I am not a marketing professional. I happened to take this up because this role was empty and I, there, there was somebody who was, supposed to like, uh, you know, take it up for now. And I took it up. Um, I know I understand business. I understand where I want to take Telugu to. That's all that I know. So there are professional people like, you know, John, Akumudra, and all of them yeah. who run this show. So I think, um, and also when we, when we hire people, right, Sherlyn, mm -hmm. we know the kind of people you're hiring. You're not hiring somebody who's going to disrupt the team because you've built the team with so much love. Yeah. And if you, if there's somebody who's joined, the team itself will tell you that, okay, this is not working because this person is not listening or this person is not uh, able to take in other thoughts or other, you know, um, ideas, something. It will come and you know when there is a lot of attrition that happens. You know that when there is a lot of like uh, disconnect with the team, you know it that, okay, there is something which is wrong. Yeah. It's very people, um, you know, at the managerial level, it is very dependent on them as to how they manage the team and how 
um, I lead the team is also very important because if I say that no, it's going to happen this way, then it's gone, right? The the whole the whole point that I want to build a team is because they are more learned than me, they're more knowledgeable in terms of you know um, doing all of these things, experienced in doing this thing. So who is one person to say that okay, this is the idea which is going to work and this is how we are going to do it. I, I don't think we've built the team in that way, so it doesn't happen that way. Okay, okay. Um, so even in setting goals and tracking progress and measuring results, you leave it out to the professionals. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes. Tell them where we want to go as an organization and where, you know, how marketing should add or contribute to that goal. And from there, I think it's their call how they decide as to okay what piece of weight will i carry or what weight this person will carry i think based on that they decide and it's given to the respective team members then okay so i'm also very curious um are there any promotion opportunities and how do you go about it in a remote setting because we know normally in an office the boss will see someone do a really good job, come in early, you know, hit their goals, go overboard and be like, hmm, more money for him, a bigger promotion, a bigger position. So how do you go about that in a remote setting? So my, uh, you know, very honestly, the metric for me is not about, oh, you're doing well only. It's about how much ownership you take up, how much, uh, you know, you're concerned about the organization also because at the end of the day, we all think that, okay, my job is to write, let's say if it is content, my job is to write content. But what is the point of writing that content if it is not adding, uh, you know, in terms of dollars or in mm. terms of uh, brand, in terms of anything to the organization or to the businesses that the organization is connected with, right? Yeah. So if somebody, I never look at it from a, personal goal perspective mm -hmm. are you aligned with the company's goal are you able to understand where the organization is growing not growing or not that i think stands apart and that's when the true quality of a person who is growing within the organization comes out as well okay. so if you look at it um i'll give you an example in uh, let's say in a different uh, uh, setup right in the sales team that i'm managing right now Mm -hmm. The sales team uh, is a very thin team. If you look at it, we're not too many people in the sales team in, in India, right? Yeah. But there are people who like really taken ownership. So when there's, uh, we have our manager, Bala, who's our senior manager, who's one of the senior most members in the team in India. He manages everything. But for the next, you know, two or three months, for the last two months plus the coming two months, he's not there because he's busy with the political uh, sales that we need to do right now so mm. he's literally not there yeah so i was a bit concerned that okay what's going to happen and you know how am i going to manage this thing because there are four departments that are there and uh, it's impossible for me to like just pick up from where he has you know left so yeah. but i was very surprised to see that there's another team member who may not be as senior to him but has risen and said that i will take up the responsibility because I know that we need this to be done at this point in time. And yeah. she's literally taken up, you know, a lot of uh, Bala's work on her plate and said that, okay, I'm going to step up. So that's where for me, it, you know, the, the, the reason to promote somebody or the reason to monetary or, uh, you know, in terms of the, the kind of uh, appraisal that we do in terms of, you know, there's a role or whatever responsibility. Right? Mm -hmm. when somebody is able to take up more responsibility than the given work mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's when you're really going above and beyond your role okay. to do something for the organization like she really saw that okay there is this vacuum that is there and how can i help yeah how can I do this thing so that you know it doesn't fall and i can grow it yeah. so i think that quality is very important in a person to um you know look Move. for Oh, okay. all right but i'm also thinking in that's mm, give me an example in the marketing team like right now you know marketing that has maybe content all those departments like what would that yeah. look like and then it's remote sure yeah. so um 
so i'll give you an example like when john joined it right mm-hmm. john was somebody who was only supposed to do content like content strategy okay, okay? yeah but when he saw that uh, prateek who was managing the team over here uh, had left the organization he picked up and he said don't worry i'm going to take care of the whole content he built an entire team along with that from that time and yeah. you know it really shaped up and to see somebody who's just giving a strategy to executing it making sure that the team is groomed hiring freshers because that's what we could afford at that point in time yeah. and grooming them to become some really good writers who gone out and made like some really good uh, name for themselves so that is something i feel like he stepped up his role it's not just content strategy but he's literally kind of heading content at this point in time yeah. so officially he's not a uh, head of content or anything he did not have to do it yeah but did that so that is something that i really care for and i i really appreciate that oh someone who thinks about the company and who puts the needs of the company first who understands that okay there's vacuum and uh, you know this is what i need to fill and i can do it and yeah. somebody who can right I... Otherwise, everybody is doing their roles. What difference is there? Yeah. Like, how do I measure, right? Yeah. Because that's the task that you're supposed to do for the amount that we agreed upon. Just because you completed a year or just because you completed a milestone does not mean you really can apply for an appraisal. Because what? Okay, forget it from an organization perspective, right? When I go back and so if, I'll take my personal example. When I started off. Mm-hmm. I always write down every week what I have achieved for the organization, what I have achieved for myself. Because wow. as much as I am doing for the organization, I need to grow myself as well, right? Yeah. If I grow, then how am I, you know, going mm. after a year or two years and saying that, hey, you know what, I've achieved this much. How do I know? So keeping a track of what you have achieved mm. for yourself. What you have done for the organization is very important, wow. and that's something that we used to do earlier. Where we write down every week mm-hmm. what we've done, yeah. something new that we've done, and the effect of it for the organization. That's wonderful, Nisha. Thank you for that amazing piece of advice. <laughs> um, all right, our next question: As a leader, how do you stay connected with your team on a personal level despite the physical distance? Yeah. Mm. So of late, I've been very extremely busy with uh, you know a lot of departments and a lot of work when it comes to like uh, you know growing the organization and um, the fundraising activities and all of that stuff. So I have not been doing one on ones, but there was a time, uh, let's say maybe about uh, a year back, where I used to regularly uh, conduct one on ones and oh. just ping them on Talk Magnet, like. You know, just talk to people, just open random conversations with people on Talk Magnet, mm-hmm. and the best way to connect is people's end of day report. When I see what they've done and how content they are, or how you know happy they have been with their day, I really want to open a conversation there. So those small things I feel like help me stay connected with the team and help me understand what each one is going through. Mm-hmm. Because um, I remember there was this girl who's. happiness level was maybe 3 out of 5 and it continued being like that for about 10 days mm. and i've got a bit worried like is he not is she not happy with the work is she not happy with the person she's working with is she not happy with what like you know why is it that your happiness level is not increasing this is at the end of the day we do everything so that we are happy right yeah ask any what do you want to do and like what do you want to you know what is it that you pray for in that i want to be happy, happy yeah i want to be at peace right yeah. and yeah. the things that you're doing for 8 hours or 6 hours or 7 hours a day is not giving you happiness that's a big concern for me yeah so initially we found it very funny when i asked them to include the happiness and the contentment level uh, in their end of day report but that's so important that the rest of the things if you don't write i'm okay <laughs> but if you don't fill up those two things with a lot of detail i feel bad because i'm not able to understand what you're going through right yeah. it's impossible connect with every day uh, with everybody every day right so those kind of things so i connected with that girl and i asked her hey, what's going on like i've seen this and then she broke down and she said you know i'm going through so much personal crisis in my life my family this 
lot going on. And I said, why are you still coming to work then? She said, because that's what keeps me going right now. If I don't do that, I'll, I'll just, I don't know what to do with my life. And I said, yeah. okay, how can I help you? How can the team help you? And she told me that, you know what, there are times when I, I want to take a break in between. Can I do that? I said, of course you can do that. And then I saw in a week's time, things changed for her and her happiness level went back to four, five out of five oh. at that time. And that I feel is very important. Uh, you know, I may not be able to, com- uh, you know, connect with everybody or, you know, kind of be in touch with everybody every day. But when I see somebody is not, uh, you know, consistently doing fine, yeah. I want to read them. That's, that's very good managerial skills, actually. <laughs> people skills. Okay. So, Thanks. notes. We, you have to be a people person <laughs> to do Nisha's job. <laughs> okay, so um, what are the most significant challenges you faced while managing a remote team and how do you overcome them? Initially, it's difficult, Sherlyn, because not everybody becomes friends so easily, right? Yeah. And everybody comes with a different temperament. Everybody comes with a different uh, idea. So bringing them all together required a lot of investment of time from my side and uh, do a lot of activities where they all bond together, connect with them individually and uh, form smaller groups and get them to talk mm-hmm. and uh, you know come up with one purpose that you're one team at the end of the day, even though you have multi-functions underneath like content, SEO, paid marketing or graphic design, video, everything, yeah. social media, you know, it does not mean that you're different teams. You're different functions under one team. Yeah. And at the end of the sales, marketing, everybody are different functions under the bigger umbrella called, you know, a family of Telugu, right? Yeah. So um, it requires a lot of, we used to celebrate birthdays. So we used to gather all of us online and we used to wow. celebrate birthdays. And we used to do something special. We used to write something for each other. We used to do all of that. So it required a lot of uh, coming together an investment of time to get them all to uh, see each other as human beings first and then as, uh, you know, whatever they're doing work. Mm. Okay. 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 How should marketing leaders prepare for the evolving dynamics of remote teams and technology advancements? So every day somebody comes up with something new that, you know, Nisha, this is, uh, this is a new update. Should we try it? And I'm like, yeah, I love technology. I am so crazy about new things that I, I think I send John Akumu and Trinidad a lot more things like, Hey, why, this is something new. Why don't you try this? Yeah. So learning about new things that's happening and exploring that is very important. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm on top of that game. And I think even the team is on top of the game. So we keep trying different things, different tools, different, uh, you know, ways to do certain things. So I think, yeah, it it starts from the top. I I believe that one. Yeah. You you can leave it to everybody that, okay, everybody might have the same uh, love for technology, but I love technology. So I keep exploring different uh, tools, different, uh, Mm. uh, you know, newer updates that come in. And I'm, I'm really curious to know. So building that curiosity is also important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right now, what technological ad- like tool or advancement are you crazy about at the moment? You know, I'm hooked to, I'm hooked to two AI platforms, Chat, GPT, and Gem, uh, Gemini. Gemini now, Google Park earlier. Yeah. And I, a lot of my PPDs, a lot of, like, a lot of uh, learning on that. Like, you won't believe it. Sometimes I also ask Chat, GPT that, if I have to introduce AI in, um, you know, in uh, talk magnet, how do I do it? What mm-hmm. would a customer want in, uh, you know, uh, in their businesses that uh, our tool combined with our product talk magnet combined with AI can help them. And I get some crazy ideas and I keep telling Prashant, uh, you know, that, you know what, we should implement this feature. Maybe it will help. So yeah. it's, it, I, I just love it. Yeah. Um, amazing. <laughs> amazing. So what's your parting shot about managing diverse and remote teams, Nisha? What are your, sorry. What's your parting shot about managing diverse and remote um, teams? Don't manage. Mm. I'm nobody to manage. I think it's, you build a layer 
where um, you have the team, you understand their temperament and you align them with each other. Mm -hmm. So I think asking people also that, hey, would you like to work with somebody, uh, you know, in shifting teams and all, uh, I ask them, would you be comfortable working with somebody, um, you know, if I'm changing their room? And I think uh, giving them enough time to explore that, mm -hmm. if they're comfortable or not, and coming back, saying that, hey, I'm not, or maybe I am, and figuring out what would work for them is most important. So in remote teams, it's very important to um, ask them, ask the people, ask the team members, what is comfortable for you and what will make you happy. Because oh. at the end of the day, uh, we're all sitting in front of the computer all day mm -hmm. and you don't have somebody beside you yeah. saying things to you. So it's very important that you ask uh, them for their, you know, um, I wouldn't say happiness at the end of the day, but uh, comfort. Is it comfortable or not? What works for them? Yeah, what works for them. All right, Nisha. Thank you. So much for Thank making you. the time yet again. Yeah, I think you'll be Thank here with us weekly <laughs> because you're it. dropping gems, and I'm I'm so I'm so honored to even have the privilege to interview on these things because I'm also getting inside. You know, not everyone will be on social media and watch these things, but I'm getting first-hand information, and I'm I'm personally I'm very glad about that. Thank you. <laughs> so, so thank so you. Much. All right. Bye. Bye, Nisha. Thank Bye. you. Bye.